After reviewing the Aris 2 that offers amazing sound quality for the money, I was very curious what the Pontus would bring, costing slightly over two times as much. So let's dive right in. As usual, I start with where this DAC is to be used. The analog outputs are connected to an amplifier that drives a set of speakers or headphones. As source you can connect it to your computer, laptop or smartphone over USB to the DAC. If you don't want a computer in the listening room, you can place it elsewhere in the house and use either a network player or network bridge. It is connected to the computer over the network and to the DAC over SPDIF, TOSLINK, USB or I2S, depending on the outputs or your source. Remote player control is usually done over a tablet or smartphone. Since the Pontus has seven inputs, you can connect lots of other digital sources too, like the digital sound output of a TV, game console, DVD or CD player. The Pontus has a very sturdy aluminium cabinet, standing on three high pointy feet. It measures 320 by 330 by 80 mm and weighs 8.5 kilos. On the front we see the standby button that keeps the Pontus in a semi live state to sound optimally immediately after switching out of standby. Then two small buttons to select inputs with above it small LEDs that indicate the chosen input. Then a phase switch that inverts the polarity of the output with LED signalling. A button that switches the oversampling on or off with LED signalling. A mute button and a button that switches the I2S input between several wiring schemes on which later on more. The remaining LEDs are there to indicate the sampling rate. It shows the base frequency 44.1, 48 or DSD plus when needed a multiplier like in this table. On the rear we see the centrally placed Furutec audio grade IEC main socket. Then write the USB audio class 2 input, the I2S input on HDMI, a TOSLINK optical input, two AES EBU inputs, a SPDIF input on BNC and a SPDIF input on RCA. On the output side we see the single ended analog outputs on RCA and the balanced analog outputs on XLR. On the bottom of the Pontus, encapsulated in a metal alloy cage, we find the twin power supply. One takes care of the digital part, one does the analog electronics. Both have an O-type transformer. A bank of capacitors provide buffering, while allegedly super linear regulators are used. I didn't want to take apart the Pontus that far, hence the photo of the power supply board by Denafrips. The cage is mounted in the cabinet with the open side visible here downwards on the bottom. This provides complete shielding of the power supply. Up higher in the cabinet a large circuit board fills up the entire surface. All inputs are mounted on that board that leads the signal to the piggyback mounted DSP board. The USB signal is handled by the Amanero USB module that supports PCM up to 384 kHz and DSD 256. The USB module is switched off when another input is selected to avoid interference. Streamers and network bridges with USB outputs will therefore not see the Pontus if USB is not chosen as input. So when setting up your player for use over USB the first time, switch the Pontus to USB. For AES 3 based inputs, AES EBU, SPDIF and TOSLINK, the AKM AK4118 digital receiver is used. An adaptive FIFO buffer feeds the audio data into a high speed RAM buffer. Denafrips claims the FIFO is literally jitter free while the Japanese NDK crystals are powered by LDO regulators. The actual digital to analog conversion is done by separate resistor banks for positive and negative in each channel. So in total four banks can be seen here. Each channel has its own Altera Max 2 processor to control the switches in the banks. In the Finshine Audio webshop, an upgrade DSP board is offered that makes sampling rates up to PCM 1536 and DSD 1024 possible. It is questionable if that is needed for normal consumer use. 
since there really is very little music available at sampling rates higher than 192 kHz and almost none at 384 kHz. Only people that feel they need to upsample audio to those high rates might appreciate it. See my video Why Upsampling? I2S is a standard developed to transport audio data on circuit boards. The name comes from Inter Integrated Circuit Sound. It was never meant to be used between audio devices and there is no standard for using it this way. The advantage of I2S is that it has separate lines for the clock, channel and the data signal which is a more robust way of data transport when implemented perfectly. Several cable types have been used by manufacturers to use it in between devices of their own making. The most seen are network cable with an RJ45 plug and, as with the Pontus, HDMI cable. The problem is that no one uses the same pin layout, the result of no standardization. I even think there might be manufacturers that use this to have the customers only buy their gear. Denofrips solved this by making the pin layout flexible. So at least it can use sources that offer I2S on HDMI plugs. The user can select what pinout is to be used by simply pressing the mode button while having selected the I2S input. There are not too many sources that offer I2S output. They are usually found on higher class equipment. A warning is in place. Although it is on an HDMI connector, it shouldn't be connected to video gear or TV. Since the Pontus is in another price category than the Ares 2 I reviewed a few weeks ago, I'll explain here again how a R2R ladder converter works. People that saw the Ares 2 review can skip it. A ladder converter is a circuit that holds a series of resistors. A 16 bit converter holds in theory 16 resistors, each one feeding half the voltage of the previous resistor to the summing line. If all switches are on, this, according to the Red Book standard, results in 2 volts output. By the way, you can't measure audio signals with a multimeter, but I like the graphics this way. If all switches are off, there is a 0 volt output. If the digital output signal is a 1, we call that the most significant bit, followed by 15 zeros, the output will be half the total voltage, so 1 volt. If the digital signal is O1 followed by 14 zeros, the second significant bit activates a second switch that is designed to produce half the voltage of the MSB switch, so 0.5 volts. The third significant bit brings 0.25 volts and so on. The MSB stands for 1 volt while the sum of all other switches stands for the other 1 volt. By combining a number of switches, any voltage between 0 volt and 2 volts can be output in 65536 steps. If you go to 20 bit resolution, the LSB shoot at 1.91 microvolts. Thermal noise and the position of resistors makes it virtually impossible to stretch the resolution to more than 20 bits. The axe that I have measured over the years never achieved real world resolution of 21 bits and that was up till now and including low bit DACs that use pulse density conversion. The only reason we have 24 bit DACs is because processors like to think in groups of 8 bits. But the lower 4 bits have absolutely no relevance in distribution media. Not that it is a problem. If the DAC is well built, a 20 bit resolution sounds extremely good. And as I have described in my video what defines the quality of a DAC, I don't consider linearity, especially in the low regions, to be of great importance to the sound quality. By the way, the Pontus outputs 2.17 volts on the single ended outputs and double that on the balanced outputs. Selecting an input is a matter of stepping through the inputs by pressing the input plus or input minus button. Given the number of inputs, this is a reasonable way of working. A remote control is not available. I like that you can switch on and off oversampling just by pressing a button. On the Ares 2 it needed a sequence of button pushes. For the rest there is not much to tell, it just does what it's supposed to do easily.
play music. It has the same smooth and easy musicality his cheapest sibling, the Ares II has, but then with further enhanced resolution and better sibilance control. Sibilance is not yet perfect, it seldom is, but it comes close which in this price range is remarkable. The lows are seriously tight and deep. Like the Ares II, the Pontus reproduces a royal stereo image projecting instruments in that image with rather realistic placement and size. Pace and rhythm are also impressive. In short, it just makes music at a higher level than you would expect for this price. It's natural, it's relaxed, expressive and musical. So this is the best act ever? No, of course not. But it is by far the best I have heard up till now in this price range. Up till now I have not seen a DAC under 3000 euros beat my DAC combination of the MyTech Brooklyn Bridge with Syntax Power Supply. Since I do not use the bridge function, you could say it functions like a normal Brooklyn DAC Plus. The price of the Pontus is lower than that of the Brooklyn DAC Plus with the Syntax, while it sounds better on most points. The Brooklyn has more functions though. It is an analog preamp that even offers phono inputs. As a DAC it does MQA decoding, reportedly has high-end headphone amps and has remote control. Choices that brings us to the end of this video, but there will be another video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.